Have you ever made a project simply because you saw something someone else made and your brain went, I want one? Because same. A few weeks ago, my mom and I were able to visit my grandma in her senior's home for the first time in quite some time. Thank you so much, Ontario government. And while we were there, I noticed a new thing in her room. At first, it just looked like a lump of knitting, but when I picked it up to look at it, I realized what it was. A fidget muff. A muff for fidgeting. A cozy muff that can keep your hands warm and that has fidgetable things on it. And my neurodivergent magpie brain went, I need one in my life. I hadn't even left the building before my brain was going over my mental inventory of the fabrics, ribbons, buttons, and beads in my stash, and when I got home I set about gathering stuff for my very own fidget muff. Now, some of you may be saying, um, Lydia, what the heck is a fidget muff? Well, allow me to elaborate. Fidget muffs go by different names, twiddle muffs, busy muffs, fidget muffs, just to name a few, but they all serve the same purpose. They were originally created for seniors, particularly with Alzheimer's and dementia, because losing your memory can cause a lot of anxiety, and with it, frenetic energy. And so, twiddle muffs were created to help give seniors something comforting to hold on to, but also give them something to do with their hands, to help release some of that anxious energy that might be building up. And over time, people began to realize that fidget muffs were helpful not just for seniors, but for a whole host of neurological conditions, including, but certainly not limited to, generalized anxiety disorder, ADHD, and autism. And though we now have a vast range of fidget items available on the market, very few of them are actually cozy. There's lots of silicon fidgets, there's the fad of fidget spinners, but there's not really a lot out there for soft and comfy fidgets, short of buying a teddy bear. Enter the fidget muff. You can make them as wild and crazy as you want, or as subtle as you like. And you can completely personalize it for your positive sensory experience. So, for autism aware, no. So, for Autism Acceptance Month, as a lot of us actually autistic folks would prefer it to be called, I am going to make my very own fidget muff. To start out, I used a winter muff for the rough measurements. This is very much a winging it project, but I wanted some kind of guideline to get me going. For lining, I used scrap flannel from my winter petticoat, as it would give a soft interior and a base layer to sew everything else onto. Then I pulled out my cabbage stash and started matching up pieces that were the size I wanted. I saddled on some embroidered overlay from my Kaylee Shindig dress, linen from my AO1 refugee gown, an end cut from my Luthien gown sari, some of my favorite TARDIS fabric, a piece from another thrifted sari, and the cotton linen lining from my American Duchess cape. These fabrics are all different, but have lovely textures. Exactly what you want in a fidget muff. A couple of the fabrics are also lighter weight, so I interlined them with a sturdier fabric to make sure they didn't pull apart once the muff was sewn together. And while this isn't a garment, every seamstress knows that one can never have too many pockets. After I flatlined the light fabrics with a sturdy backing, I began stitching the pieces together. And since some of my cabbage pieces were longer than others, I trimmed everything down to match. Then I pinned and sewed the two exterior halves of the muff together. Once I had my exterior ready, I pinned it to the lining flannel, right sides together. Despite my measuring, the exterior ended up a bit smaller than the interior, so I trimmed the flannel down. Once it was sewn together on three sides, I flipped it right side out. I gave the edges a gentle press to make sure everything lay nicely, and the base of the patchwork was finished. I wanted to make sure my stuffing didn't go all over the place, so I put a bit of blue velvet ribbon down the middle and stitched it down. At this point, I had a bag shape split down the middle. I began to fill it with my leftover coleslaw, which you've seen if you watched my previous video, making an Edwardian bustle pad. Like the bustle pad, I filled my muff in stages, as I knew if I filled it all at once, it would get too lumpy and be too tricky to sew. So I treated each piece of fabric as the start of a new pocket, filling and stitching individually. When I reached the end, I backstitched all the way across to secure everything, and then felled down the flannel to hide all the raw edges. Thank you. 
Then I added my pocket. I whipped it all the way around and then made a little fidget to fit inside. Fidget muffs often have ribbons, zippers, or strings of beads on the outside, so I thought I'd add one befitting a seamstress. And now the fun begins, adding whatever little fidgety bits of stuff I had lying around that struck my fancy. I started by tufting my orange sari fabric and adding a few little brass beads. Then I pleated some satin ribbon and sewed it down one side. I had a tiny little scrap of silk ribbon left from my first trip to the Toronto Makuba a couple of years ago and decided it would be perfect on my muff. On the inside, I added a couple rows of vintage velvet ribbon, which actually came from my grandma's house. And some little metal beads. I didn't want a lot of hard textures on the inside of the muff, since that's where you put your hands to be cozy. But these were pleasant enough texture that it's all good. To the edge of the pocket, I added my last two pewter beads from my Killian shirt. Then I added a line of these really cool square glass beads. Now, most fidget muffs are knit or crocheted, but I was wanting to use up my cabbage, and I had decluttered most of my half balls of yarn recently, but I did have one special yarn that is super soft, so I crocheted a small rectangle and stitched it on the inside, adding to the cozy factor. Then it was just a matter of deciding how much is too much. It would be super easy to go overboard with adding stuff, but I wanted to keep my first muff closer to the simple side. To close it up, I folded it in half with the right sides out and did a lot of small whip stitches along the edge with strong silk thread. And then for extra texture, I added a length of grow green ribbon which also hides the seam. And there we go! one completed fidget muff. I love looking at all the pieces that went into it and being able to see two years worth of sewing projects. Plus, it's going to be so nice for movie nights on the occasions I don't have any hand sewing to keep my fidgety hands busy. If you want to make a fidget muff for a loved one, yourself, or to donate to a local senior's home, there are so many options and inspirations on Pinterest, and it's super easy to tailor for specific interests or sensory preferences. So go forth, my friends, and make cozy, fidgety things.